recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived there ahead of them. And as he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him. And they rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. And as we hear this story tonight from Mark chapter 6, I'm hoping that there's a map on one of those slides there. I think it's so interesting when they built the lectionary that they gave us this wonderful portion from Mark, Mark 6, but what they skipped out on was the feeding of the 5,000. A little easier to preach on the feeding of the 5,000 than Jesus taking his disciples away to a deserted place in this game of tag with the crowds. But I think it's really interesting. I mean, maps are always interesting. We can learn so much from them. In our first reading, we heard God saying, I'll collect my people, the remnant of my people. We know that Jesus was one of the Israelite peoples, but here at the bottom you see Judea and Orange. That was really what was left of the kingdom of Israel. You see Jerusalem in there. So people who were from there saw themselves as being really the pure ones, the best worshipers, the real followers of God. But chapter 6 began not in Jerusalem, not even in Samaria, but north of that, in Nazareth. Which, if, you, if your eyes are great, <laughs> you can see it. It's the second city up in that yellow section. And so, there they are at Nazareth, and no one recognizes Jesus. Because it's his hometown, they say, we know this guy. He's got to be faking. We, we knew him when he was little. He can't be this amazing. And no one recognizes him. And so he leaves. And in Mark 6, they travel all over, but especially back and forth at that lake between the yellow and the purple. That is the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus calms storms, walks on water. And they go back and forth trying to find their way away from the crowds. But by the end of Mark chapter 6, we hear that all the people have heard about Jesus, and everyone is scurrying to be near him, to even touch the hem of his cloak. And whether they're in the farm or the marketplace, there everyone is. And so, it's an interesting question. As we start down at the bottom, with Jerusalem, where the real worshipers are, because they can go to the temple. When we get further away, there are the Samaritans that the Judeans look down on, because they can't worship in the temple. They worship on a mountain in Samaria. And we get even further away from the center of power, the center of faith, the center of where you can encounter God. There they are in Nazareth. And now, in tonight's reading, they go to Genesaret, which is so small, it's not even on the map, but it's at the top right-hand side of the Sea of Galilee. So it's an interesting question, isn't it? The real people of God. Are they the ones that can claim purity and go touch the wall of the temple? Or are the real believers, the ones who are out in the dust, chasing Jesus and refusing to leave after he's taught all day. They'd rather go hungry than go home. Who are the real believers there? 
I think it's obvious, right, is the people who are chasing Jesus, who see in him the line of David. But then that's a question for us, right? What do we, what would make us real believers, real followers, real Christians? Is it if we flow to the Holy Land and place our feet there? Is it if we carry a Bible in our car or in our phone these days? What does it mean to be the real followers of God? Well, there's another parallel here, which is at the bottom, that huge body of water is the Dead Sea. Okay? And the river below it, above it, that's the Jordan. That's where baptisms were happening. And then up above it is the Sea of Galilee, and above that they call that the Upper Jordan. So it flows down into the Sea of Galilee, down into the Dead Sea, and out from there. Here's what I think. To be the real people of God, we want to see the way that water moves. That water doesn't stay in one place, does it? It comes out from the hills and the springs and so many places, and then it flows together, and then it goes back out. There are the other rivers that go to the sea or down into the other land. To me, that's the waters of baptism on that map. Those waters don't hang out where people are important and have lots of money for short houses, as nice as they may be. But with the waters of our baptism, they flow out into every part of our lives. They continually reach out, and they help us then to reach out, to let others know to be a real child of God, all you have to do is be human. To be a real follower of Jesus, come be baptized. You are welcome. Come listen to the stories about him. And the more we hear, the more we wish to walk with him. And so we look at the map, and we can see the political centers and the borders of towns. But what I'd like you to remember from tonight is the way the water reaches out, feeds God's people, guides them just as a shepherd would lead them along the waterways. And that in God's baptism, God reaches out to us and through us, wherever we are, wherever we go. Amen. Amen.
verse, but it is the power of God that we are describing and proclaiming that power and that love as we join in the creed. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him, the heart of the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He was seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend to your church, O oh God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in the proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those who are pursuing a call to ordained ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice, especially we remember those who are celebrating baptismal anniversaries. For Lindsay Buckler, Amy Schwab, Quinlan Springborn, Betsy Carpenter, Lily Javoni, Molly Javoni, Jillian Ingrail, Michael D. Hoff, Tyler Wright, Abigail Cosper, Bethany Cosper. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain crop lands and pastures, and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve rivers, rivers, lakes, and streams that offer refreshment and the way we see the water moving across the map that it may remind us of your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls, whether lines on a map or attitudes in our hearts, that break that would make us strangers to one another. Lord, unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide dipl diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Bring us together, O oh Lord, to listen and see the best in one another and our attempts to live in justice. Hear us, O oh God. Heal your people, O oh God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. We especially pray for Albert Abt, Joanne Adair, Richard Bensavengo, Eugene Ebersberger, Tara Graham, Tom Hall, Lynn Larson, Claudia Levin, Mark Tierney, and all we name before you now, out loud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O oh God. At times when we feel like a remnant, remind us that you will gather the remnant of your people to bless the world. O oh Lord, prepare a table amongst us where we receive food for our hungering spirits, renew our commitment to provide for one another, and revitalize all ministries that heal and feed and nurture our hungry neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray, Lord, for those celebrating wedding anniversaries, and we ask that you would bring them joy, hope, and faithfulness. We especially pray for Carolyn and Jim Cuviello, celebrating 51 years, Marlies and Jeff Patterson, celebrating 35 years, and Janine and Shane Legrand. Hear us, O oh God. You lead us home, O oh God. We give thanks for all who have died, now, with the, now citizens with the saints on high, especially we are those we remember before you now. As you have received them into your 
your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy and glory. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promises of your saving love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace.
part of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. We remember that on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, Holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Thank you. 